Jillian, what are you doing? Hi, uh, I thought it was your night off tonight. Uh, yes, ma'am, but I had to um, drop off Sam and Maddie at their Grandma Isabella's, and then your grandmother decided to visit some friends in New York, so I drove her to the airport. Wait, can I help you with that? No. No, I have got it all figured out. See, I, I, uh, I need to practice for when my husband comes home, so I just got one of Jake's um, lab coats. So I'm just gonna start on this. Okay, uh, uh, the iron? Uh, yeah, right. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Are, are you sure you want to do this? Um, do you have some questions you'd like to ask me first? No. No, get it all figured out. Everything's under control. You, uh, you go off. You enjoy your night off, okay? Good night. Joe, this is Julian. This is a message for Joe. Uh, I'm here at Wild Wind, and I'm all alone. There's nobody here, and the light, the light had gone out, and it's just completely dark. I have no idea what happened. And if you get this message, could you just please come over to Wild Wind right away? I'm in the study. Thank you. Scott, it's Julian. Listen, um, I'm all alone here at Wildwind, and if you get this message, just rush over right away as soon as you can. Thanks.
ironing board? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll explain it later. Okay, all right. Um, why are you here? Oh, man, I got the message that you left Scott. You know, I, I, you sounded so frightened. I, I, I thought I should call 911, but I didn't know what to say, so I, you know, I, uh, I came over. Yeah, the lights, um, went out. Um, I'm gonna get you an ice pack in the kitchen. Will you be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be fine. Especially now that I know that, you know, you're okay. Why do you suppose the lights went out? Uh, it's probably just a brownout. You know, I, I noticed the lights on the street were out in the area, too. It's no big deal. Why were you ironing? Uh, huh. I was just practicing. For? Well, you um, wouldn't understand. You're probably right. I wouldn't understand why a beautiful woman would tear out of a party and race home so late to iron. It sounds a little pitiful. Maybe even a little, uh, desperate. <laughs> Maybe I am desperate. Maybe I needed a little distraction. From? From you. From the way you look tonight, or the, your eyes, or or your sound of your voice. I keep trying to get you out of my head, and I wish you would just stay out, but you won't. Well, uh, maybe I should just leave then. Oh. oh, where does it hurt, Ryan? Where does it hurt? You know what? You know what? You know what? It hurts everywhere. Jillian, it hurts everywhere. It hurts my head. It hurts everywhere. And being near you isn't really helping very much. This is certainly not helping very much. Whether I'm near you or I'm away from you, it's all torture. I know. Well, if you know, then why do you keep doing it to me? I know. I just know because I can't get you out of my head either. What are you saying, Jillian? What are you what are you what are you saying, Jillian? Stay. Talk to me. Tell me, please. Just tell me what I you're saying. I love you. I still love you. Is that what you wanted to hear, Ryan? Are you satisfied now? That I nearly had to drag a declaration of your love for me out of you? No, that doesn't satisfy me, Jillian. It really doesn't, especially because the last time you told me you loved me, you married Jake the next day. And why'd you want to hear it? I, I, I want you to hear it. Jillian, I, do you understand? I want you, I want you to know your heart. I know! I married Jake. I chose Jake. For all the wrong reasons, Jillian, you deserve so much better than this. I betrayed him. I'm the reason he left. No, no you did not betray him, Jillian. You didn't. You, you showed him so much love. You, you went to the wall for him, and he can't even begin to fathom that, that kind of devotion, that, that kind of passion, because it's too reckless. But I do understand it. Jillian, I understand it because you showed it to me, too. I did, but I, I was too messed up to accept it. I, I, I couldn't believe that somebody so, so rare, as rare as you, could offer such an exquisite gift. All I ever wanted, Ryan, was you. I know. I know you said that to me, but I, I, I couldn't understand why, Jillian. I just knew that you deserved 
somebody better than the confused, than the confused man that I was, but I'm a different man now, Julian. I'm stronger now, I'm clearer, and I know what I want to do with my life, and I know who I want to spend it with, and it's you, Julian. You've changed, Ryan. I've grown up, and I want to be a better person. I want to be kind and, and caring and understanding. Well, you are. You are those things. Jillian, you're all those things. This is my fault. This, this, you see, my confusion pushed you into a life, into, into a love that is so much smaller than you deserve. Jillian, it, it was me. It was never you. I wasn't fair to you. So don't go try and change who you are. Don't try and change who you are to prevent from being hurt again. Don't, don't settle for a love that's Less than the sun, the stars, than the moon, Jillian. You deserve, you deserve it all. And I may be crazy if I think that I can give those things to you. And I may be dreaming if I think that we can start over again. But you know what? I never let myself dream before, Jillian. I never did. And now it's all I do. And you are in every single one. By candlelight? But I'm fine now, thanks. Thanks uh -huh. to you now that you're here. Well, I came as quickly as I could once I got your your message. And uh, luckily I was able to find the uh, emergency generator and I turned it on. But where is everybody? Well, Alex and Edmund are in London. And Grandmama went to visit a friend in New York. And Sammy and Maddie, they're with Isabel for the night. Oh, my goodness. Well, 
You know, if you'd like some company, I could I could stay a while. Oh, that's fine. Um, Joe, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to bed and sleep. You sure? Because you could throw, you know, pack a few things and come and spend the night with us. Well, you know best. You... So, this is what you've been doing while your husband's been away. Oh, I was just practicing for Jake. It's very sweet. <laughs> well, you know, it's really not um, as, as easy as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure you'll be a pro by the time Jake returns. Oh, which reminds me, Jake called. And what he wanted was to give me his new cell phone number. He wants you to call him. If Jake wants me to call him right away. When you're ready. How is he? Um, he sounded good. He sounded good. Did you say anything about his plans or anything? Well, I guess he's, uh, he's got involved with some volunteer group of doctors in some project or other. He, he didn't get into details. But we really didn't talk all that long. He was calling from ER, you yeah. know. Oh. Sounds like he's keeping busy. I think work is good for him. It's good. Did he, um, say when he was coming home or... No, but he did, he did say he very much wants you to call him when you're, you feel up to it. Joey. Sweetheart, I know this is very, very hard on you. Actually, it's hard on both of you. But he really, he does love you. And knowing you're here and waiting for him, he'll find his way back. Jake is such a wonderful man. You're the best thing that's ever happened to her. Well, I think it's time I was on my way back home. I don't, uh, don't worry about all the lights. Uh, the emergency generator will uh, go off as soon as the main power comes on. You sure you're all right? Yeah. You're so kind to me. Thank you. Your family now. I want you to know, if ever you need anything, you just make a phone call. I will. Thank you. Okay. Good Jillian, that number doesn't change what you said to me, that you love me. 